Welcome everyone and welcome to Great Academy Ashton. My name's Mr. War and it is my absolute pleasure to introduce myself as your new head teacher. Um, and I really want to start off on first and foremost that name Great Academy Ashton because you know what? We are a great academy. And the reason we're a great academy is because every day over 1,200 young people come to our school, come to our academy, and they absolutely jump in with both feet. And they're supported by over 200 great staff. So let's just focus on that there again. Our 1,200 young people come to us every day with their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, yes, some of their problems, some of their frustrations. And our job here is to inspire them. Our job is to inspire them to be the best versions of themselves so that they, when they get out into this big wide world, they can jump in and achieve whatever it is they want to achieve. And my job, my job as your principal, as your head teacher, is to support them and to support our staff so that they can support each other and achieve at the highest levels. So let me again just focus in on that word achievement. Achievements not just in GCSEs and BTECs and the other qualifications. Achievements in every aspect of school and academy life. It's spiritual, it's social, it's physical, it's cultural, because actually we're a great community. This great academy is a great community because we are so diverse. We're serving this community of Tameside and Ashton so well over many years now that actually what we're trying to produce is the best young people for this brilliant community. And I just want to focus in on the staff. I'm blessed as a head teacher to be this head teacher because actually I've got the most talented, inspirational staff. Our history teachers are historians. Our maths teachers are mathematicians. Our science teachers are scientists. And in this industry, in our country, that makes my job so much easier. And yes, I'm the new head teacher. So if you're starting with us in September, you're also starting with me as a new person. So let me just introduce myself as a person. My name's David War, and this is my second headship. And it's a great honor to be able to serve this community and to serve you. I have four boys. I'm blessed with four boys. My eldest, Oliver, is training to be an accountant all the way down to my youngest, Jonathan and they do jump in with both feet. My youngest boy, he's jumping into both feet into year seven currently. They do American football, they do basketball, and they do a lot of sport, and that's their thing. Our job is to find out what your thing is, and when we find out what it is, we're gonna celebrate you. We're gonna make you the best version of yourself we possibly can, and that could be on the sports field, it could be in the classroom, it could be in whatever it is that you want to be brilliant at, and we are going to support you to be brilliant. So let's go on that brilliance. We have high expectations, and I'm unapologetic for those high expectations. And it's high expectations of every element of, academic, of academy life. We have high expectations of your behavior your behavior together as a community. We have high expectations of your uniform and how you dress and how you have pride in the, in the badge on your shirt because this is Great Academy Ashton. This is your Great Academy and this is gonna be your great journey over the next five years. And I also have expectations about you in lessons. You need to sit there and you need to engage with the staff because these staff have the knowledge that you need to get out of them. And that's part of the main purpose of school. But I've also got great support workers who will get around you and support you because you know what? It's been a long time since I've been a teenager, a very long time. And teenage years are hard years at times. They're brilliant years at times, but also there's challenges in those teenage years. And we've got the support staff and we've got the teaching staff and we've got everyone to get around you to be the best version of yourself. So to sum up, what are we after here at Great Academy Ashton? And what am I after here as your head teacher? We're going to inspire you. We're going to inspire you in every aspect of your young life so that you will achieve in every aspect of your young life. And I give you a commitment. When you achieve, whether or not that be physical, spiritual, moral, social, or academic, or vocational, we're going to celebrate you so that every single young person can walk out of here knowing and feeling that their academy 
their school is celebrating their successes. Welcome to Great Academy Ashton. It's going to be a brilliant journey over the next five years and I'm really looking forward to serving you and supporting you on that journey. So I'd now like you to sit back, relax and enjoy our video. And my challenge to you is when you get here to a Great Academy Ashton, that actually this time next year, you're on that video, that you're jumping in with both feet and you're taking part. There's some phenomenal celebration in this video, some great moments. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Thank you. Welcome to the exclusive GAA fashion show, where you'll see the latest in school wear trends. Here's Lorraine, she's modelling the perfect school shoe. They have a proper sole and they are professional. They are not a trainer disguised as a shoe. Benedetta is modelling our school trousers. They need to be tailored trousers, no leggings, jeggings or jeans are allowed. Ask yourself, would you wear these for work? Alfie is our head boy. He is modelling our academy blazer. The blazer must be worn at all times by all students. Talia is modelling our branded school skirt. You can buy these in the straight or pleated version and they show off our school logo with pride. Mamadou is part of our academy leadership team, so he's wearing our silver plain tie. Eleanor is modelling the perfect school socks. They can be plain white or black, they can be ankle or below the knee, but never over the knee and there's never any frills allowed. Here's Rayhan modelling school shoes and our school badges. Rayhan is modelling the sports captain and learning leader badges. Lola is demonstrating our Key Stage 3 tie which is black and silver. The clip-on version makes it really easy to take on and off for PE. Abia is showing us our Key Stage 4 tie. You will see it's burgundy, black and silver. Alicia is showing off our blazer. These must be worn at all times by everybody in the academy. The logo lets everyone know you're proud to be part of Great Academy Ashton. Elizabeth is our head girl. She's wearing our optional school jumper with the added hair flick. Here's Mackenzie. He's modelling the GAA PE kit. Students must wear the Academy PE top, but they can choose to wear plain black shorts or tracksuit bottoms. The optional extras are the hoodie or the GAA leggings. Thanks for watching the exclusive GAA fashion show, but remember, it's a uniform, not a fashion show. Hi there, and welcome to The Great Show. I'm Matthew. I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. We hope you're all having a great evening and thank you for joining us. On tonight's show, we'll be introducing some great guests. Yes, pun intended. And today we'll be talking about how great GAA is and what it's like to be in this amazing school. Our first guest today will be Mr. Kennelly, and I believe he's brought two students with him. Hello, everyone. So, this is Mr. Kennelly, who is our transition manager. So, Mr. Kennelly, please could you tell me exactly what transition manager means? Transition manager, Matthew, in its simplest terms, means easing the journey between key stage two and key stage three, allaying any fears that the students may have about starting a new, a new school, or any parents that might have any fears. So, as transition manager, what types of activities do you create to ensure that smooth transition from primary school to high school? Okay, well, it's actually ongoing in our school. At Great Academy, we have an ongoing process. Um, we host many of the primary school sports tournaments, for example. So right from year one through to year six, we have students come into our academy um, accessing the sporting facilities. We also liaise with year six teachers to make sure that the work we set in year seven is, has continuity from what they're doing in year six. So um, what, what types of activities do you do with Year 6 to help them settle into their school life at GAA? Well, Matthew, uh, as I said before, we have quite an extensive transition um, policy. It starts from right from the word go when we get the names of the students that uh, we know are coming to us. So that's in March. Once we know the names, me and uh, members of staff from my team will go into primary schools, we'll go into every primary school for every student. We'll interview the year six teachers to glean information, not only academic information, but also social information about that child. We could be visiting over 40 primary schools. Okay, once we've got that information, we'll use that information um, to put them in the correct sets when they start with us, and also to put them in the correct um, tutor groups. What is my favorite transition 
uh, opportunity, we have our family learning day. Now this runs on a Saturday morning. We invite all the families of the students who are starting with us in September. Uh, and we have a fun learning morning where activities are designed for families to get talking to each other and students to get talking to each other. So at least they, have, they know somebody. They also get uh, to see more of the building and meet more key members of staff. Uh, we also have our induction days. So we have two full induction days where uh, students come in for two full days. They'll spend a huge chunk of time with their new form teacher, get to know the people in their form, get to know the building. Um, uh, and that is, again, to allay the fears of any students that might be a little tentative. If we do know we have someone who's really anxious about starting, then we can organise bespoke transition activities. These could be small classes coming in for a typical day at the academy, or it could be individual students that will work with our inclusion department. But it doesn't stop when the summer holidays come, because Ryan, our Manchester United hub officer, the wonderful Ryan, um, he organises a summer school, especially for the Year 6 students who are starting with us in Year 7. So, may I ask, have you brought any lovely students with you today? I have, Matthew. I've brought two wonderful Year 8 students. Uh, we've got Corey. Hello, Corey. Corey's in Year 8 and his dad actually works at the Academy. He's the head of maths. Imagine that, having your dad working at, the, at your school. Oh, and I've got the wonderful Viddy. She also is a Year 8 student and been with us for just over a year. Welcome, Viddy. So, Corey, may I ask, how was the transition process for you at GEA? Did it help you settle in? Firstly, it's not that bad having a dad that goes to the same school that I go to. I found that all the activities offered really helped me settle into secondary school life. Me and myself and my family went to all the activities there were. Not only does it help you find your way around this big school, but it also helped you to make new friends who were moving into Year 7 with you. Family Learning Day was fun, and it really helps because you met a large number of the teaching staff at GAA. So, Viddy, apart from these current Covid situations, you have almost spent a full year at GAA. Can you describe GAA in three words? And can you give any advice to any student wanting to put GAA down on their school list? Um, yeah, uh, exciting welcoming and huge. When I first started GAA, my, one of my biggest fears was getting lost in this huge building. Although it is very big, you'll soon get used to the different subject areas any way around. The staff are very welcoming and friendly and will always show you around if you are ever lost. If I were to give advice to anyone who will be joining GAA, it would be to embrace everything about the academy make new friends, join as many clubs as you can during that run during lunchtime and after school. Overall, I think Great Academy is a great school. Thank you, Viddy. Thank you, Corey. And thank you, Mr. Kelly, for coming on the show and answering some questions. Next up, we have Ryan, who is our Manchester United Foundation Officer. Ryan, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Can you tell us a bit about what you do at GAA? Yeah, I do a bit of all sorts, really, within GAA. So I work um, for everywhere from supporting Mr Kenley with the Year 6 transition, so that's from open evening events um, all the way up to supporting our Year 11s, stay on track in lessons to achieve the best grades possible. In between all of this, my role um, gives students a range of fantastic opportunities and things like that as well, from mentoring, delivering leadership programmes, business enterprise programmes, and also working um, with football and futsal opportunities after school as well. As well as all of this, we also run lots of different events, festivals and tournaments for students at GEA to be involved with, so it's fantastic. And on top of all this, we also run um, holiday camps and things like that as well. So it's, there's loads to get involved with within, the, within Manchester United Foundation. Sounds like you have a busy job. Yes, <laughs> very, very, very busy. What's so, it like working for both GEA and the Manchester United Foundation? It's, it's fantastic. So I, I love working in, in the school, working with as many children and as many students as possible. But then it's great working with Man United as well um, because we get all the, all the bonuses of the tickets, the incentives and things like that, which I can support and, and, and provide to the students as well. Do you see much of Old Trafford? Yes. Um, and I also try and get the students to see as much of Old Trafford as possible too. So if I'm not taking students on stadium tours or running different events and festivals there, we're providing students with match tickets as a reward for good behaviour. 
So you have to teach students who don't support Manchester United as well? Of course. So there are many students that don't support Manchester United or even like football at all. So that doesn't matter for me. Um, all I want to do is I want to support the students within this school. So there's lots and lots of programmes and lots, lots of opportunities that aren't football related as well. And in your opinion, what's the best thing about GAA? The best thing for me with GAA is that they really care about making the students students' time at school as, as fun and as cool as possible. So we do that by trying to reward them as much as we can. And within the Manchester United Foundation, we do that by providing lots and lots of different positive opportunities, um, whether that is through intervention, whether that's through incentives, trips, rewards and match tickets as well. And now I'd like to bring on Jack and Kate. Welcome. Thank you. Jack, can you tell me about your involvement with the Manchester United Foundation? I've learned lots of skills with the Manchester United Foundation, including leadership skills, which has been very fun. We also have regular football training sessions, which helps the team to improve. And Kate, what about you? Manchester United Foundation has helped me a lot by giving me a range of opportunities, such as setting up football tournaments and choosing me for the GA student voice. I've also learned a lot from them by doing leadership classes. How has the Manchester United Foundation helped you over the last year? Through the foundation, they've helped build my confidence. We've done interviews for different roles, and not only do they do that, they help fix problems and care about the pupils' well-being. Jack, you're a Man City fan. Would you still recommend working with the Manchester United Foundation? Yes, I would recommend working with the United Foundation because they give you lots of good opportunities and life lessons, and it's not all about United or football. Thank you. Tyler, who's next? So I've got two great guests with me today. I've got Mr Scully and Major Wilmers. Hello, gents. Hello. Hello. So, Mr Scully, I've heard that you've run the Duke of Edinburgh Award. Can you tell our audience and students what it's generally all about and what we should really expect? So it was an award set up to um, encourage students to develop life skills um, outside of the classroom. So they do some hill walking and map reading skills and some camping involved in it. Then they have to do three other sections that they complete in their own time. One is a volunteering, so doing some volunteering in the local community of some description. Mm -hmm. They have to complete a skill, so where they learn a new skill like a musical instrument or learn about cars or mechanics and that sort of things. Yeah. And then they have to do um, some sort of physical activity for a period of time as well, which is generally just playing some sort of sport or taking up a new sport. All them things combined together over a period of time and allow them to pass the award that they're working towards. So who would you say will be entitled to the award? So it starts from year nine. You've got to be in year nine to um, start this. Then generally the year nines will do their bronze. The year tens will do a silver award, which is just slightly harder. They have to do um, a bit longer camping and walking. They have to do slightly longer on their physicals and their skills and they're volunteering by a period of three months or six months, depending on what they choose to do. And then um, when you leave our school and go into sixth form, then you can take up your gold award. You've got to be over 16 to do that, to start that. That's very nice. So, thank you, Mrs Scully. And I guess we've got our question, Mr Major Wallace, now. So, I've heard that when you go on trips and uh, expeditions, I've heard that you go with Mr Scully. Can you tell what kind of expeditions that students would normally go on, what they should expect? Okay, well, first of all, um, not only do we great, uh, have great facilities within the academy, we've got the great facilities outdoors, which is, to me is just a bigger classroom. Um, so the type of expeditions we would go on, um, the students would have to do a practice expedition, and then they have to do a qualifier. Now, if they're running at bronze, that would be two days walking or two days activities, one night camping. If they're running at silver, that'd be three days activities, three days walking, two nights camping. Uh, and the joy of being in this area is within 10 minutes of walking out the front gates, we've got Ilham Moorland, and that's ideal for the beginners. Uh, within an hour, we've got the Peak District National Park. And again, um, that lends itself to the more um, experienced deer veer, and we've got them trained to that level. Um, so yeah, the, the actual uh, area itself is ideal, and we utilise it as best we can. 
Yeah. So let's say if you're going on a specific type of expedition, uh, would many of the students need to worry about having all of their equipment or would it just be a couple? We will guide the students on what they should wear, but we will never make money or lack of equipment an issue. We have got enough equipment that we can loan to students, okay? And also there's a level of health and safety involved and comfort. You know, we want the students to enjoy the experience mm -hmm. and not come off the expedition cold, wet, and, and feeling as though they didn't have the right equipment. Yeah. So I've been wondering, and probably still with the audience, have you got any maybe funny or cute stories that you could share with us? I have, and there isn't enough time to share them all. But what I would say is when a student comes off an expedition, there are some definites. They're definitely tired. Yeah. They're definitely perhaps hungry. They definitely need a shower. Um, but also, they've definitely had a good time. There's one sort of anecdotal story I can tell, and it, re it revolved around some Year 11 students that were camping in a field that just so happened to have uh, ducks quite happily amongst the students. Um, one student came past and found an egg. Um, and when, within minutes pointed this out, and there was a group of students all pointing at an egg, um, and the ducks had moved off. And I was asked whether they could pick the egg up. Um, and obviously under normal circumstances, we don't touch nature. But I said to the student, yeah, yeah, you're fine. And as he picked it up, he felt it was warm. It, that egg soon went into someone's woolly hat and they nurtured this egg. And there was plans to bring it back to the academy for it to hatch out. It's going to be the school mascot. They had names for it. Um, it was heartbreaking later in the day to, to, to ask them to hand the egg back because oh. it was actually my boiled egg for my breakfast, which somehow had ended up on the floor. Um, it, they saw the funny side, but obviously they, they got back to me later on with their humour. Okay. So thank you guys for the great pleasure you've given me today and the audience, and hopefully you two have a great day today. Hi, I'm Alfie, head boy at Great Academy Ashton. I'm going to take you around the school and we can meet some of the wonderful teachers. Hello everyone, I'm Alfie Clifford, head boy at Great Academy Ashton and today I'm joined by head of art, Miss Hall. How are you? I'm fine, Alfie. What would you draw first, the chicken or the egg? I think I'd paint the chicken. What sort of things will students learn about in their art lessons? So, children are going to learn how to paint and how to draw. We study human form. They're going to learn some textiles. We're going to do clay work and some construction. Wire modelling, card construction, that sort of thing. The best thing about art is that we explore different artists, medias and styles. Why is the study of art important to children? Oh, it's really important. It helps children make sense of the world through the lens that is art. We look at different cultures, different artists from different parts of the world. It's diverse and all the artists that we look at are alive. What I like most about art is that I can relax and it's creative outlet for me. Have any of your students gone to study art at university and or made a career from art? Yes, Gulma Jalani just got a first from Newcastle University in visual arts. Wow. Thank you for your time today, Miss Howell. Back to you. Hi, I'm Maya Mystery here talking to Mr Chadwick, a history teacher. How are you today, sir? Very well, thank you, Maya. Are you? I'm fine. So, sir, what is history all about? So, history is a study of the past and where we come from, um, and it helps us to understand where we are today. One of my favourite things about history is maybe teaching Mr Chadwick. Um, he really, like, puts a different aspect to learning. So, what are the benefits of taking history? History is a really important subject if you want to go and study things such as law or journalism um, or even uh, law enforcement such as being in the police. Um, it's also really important because it helps us to understand um, how our society has been formed today um, and how our culture has been formed today. I love history because I love learning about how Henry VIII changed his beliefs so he could get a divorce and marry Anne Boleyn. What can new students expect in the history curriculum? 
So new students that come to us follow a chronolo chronological curriculum at Key Stage 3, sorry. Um, they start off looking at the Romans, we then go on to study the Battle of Hastings, um, the introduction of castles to England, and we also look at the Middle Ages, so things like Robin Hood, the Black Death, and the feudal system. Then going into Year 8, students will study the Aztecs, they will study World War I, they will look at the American West, um, and then they will finish off in Year 9 looking at 20th century history. Thank you, back to you. Hi all, Elizabeth Sulumu, Head Girl, interviewing our Head of English, Miss Wright. How are you? I'm good, thanks Elizabeth. So English lessons seem to be very popular. Why do you think this is? Um, I think our students love it because we do such a wide range of literature that we look at from some of the pre-1914 up to modern day and we get them enrolled so they're not just writing or reading, they get to be enrolled as police officers and on pick things as well as then um, be a journalist or sort of like a social worker and unpick the texts. The good thing I like about English is it allows you not only to stay within the classroom and learn but to escape the classroom by looking at different alternative viewpoints and interpretations of the writer. What type of things do the students study in Key Stage for you? Uh, well obviously we'll do the basic literacy skills so like your spelling, your reading um, and writing but they'll study things in role, so they'll look at um, alter egos and crime fiction and study that in role as a police officer. They'll study um, spy fiction, they'll study poetry, uh, pre-19th century um, writers um, and they'll also get to write their own um, and we look at Harry Potter, that's always a favourite. I have a deep love for reading and we read a lot of books during English classes but my favourite has to be An Inspector Calls because I love reading crime books and they really it's a really interesting book. Can students learn English beyond the classroom? Yes, of course. Um, as well as sort of things in school where we have um, creative writing um, workshops at lunch times and after school. We often um, run a newspaper club and they write newsletters, but they can do their skills across all the other subjects. But we also have lots of great trips in school where we take them to language workshops. We have theatre companies coming in to do drama workshops with them and we take our students out to the theatre. So last year we went to see Macbeth and Inspector Calls. Thank you, Miss Wright. Now back to you. Hi, it's Alfie back again in the music room interviewing Miss Kavner. How are you? Hi Alfie, I'm good, thank you. Miss Kavner, what do you think the greatest piece of music is ever? That is the hardest question anyone could ever ask um, someone that really likes music because there are so many different pieces of music that I like, but I love classical music um, probably the most, that's what I'm trained in. But I really like a band called Blossoms from Stockport, just down the road from here, they're really amazing as well. The thing I enjoy the most about music is the complex beats I can do on drums. If students have interest in learning an instrument or singing, how can the music department help them? So basically, when you come to school, you just need to come and see me. Um, and I'm the person that sorts out the instrument lessons. We have really high quality, quality teachers that come in and teach um, singing. We have guitar lessons. We have drum kit lessons. We even have brass lessons and string lessons at the moment. So anything that you're interested in, we can adapt the lessons to suit you. And that would be a 20 minute lesson every single week that you'd luckily get out of one of your other lessons to come to. Um, and it's a really enjoyable thing to do, great experience. What can a new student expect from the music department when they come to you? So the music department at Great Academy Ashton is um, it's great. We have a lot of different activities going on. Um, with everything that's going on at the moment, we're really trying to start things like choirs again, rock bands, um, so a lot of different ensembles that you can join after school. But within lesson time, we try to adapt learning so it suits everyone's musical interests and tastes. We do lots of different activities, but mainly we're trying to prepare you as best as possible for when you leave and you go to college or university and study music um, and make sure that you can do that to the best of your ability. Thank you for answering our questions, Miss. Back to you. Hi, it's Ruan Bashir here, Deputy Head Boy, and I'm here interviewing Mr. Saula, Head of Maths. How are you today, sir? I'm very well, thank you. What I love about maths is that the subject varies so much because there's, there's different things, different possibilities, but they all come down to one answer. Maths is one of the most important subjects in Great Academy, Ashton. Why do you think this is? Well, I know it's a popular subject among students and I think it's partly down to the, the enthusiasm of the teachers. Mm. We love our subject yeah. and I think we get that across to the kids and we're organised, we know what we're doing and that helps with good lessons. Yeah. The thing I love the most about maths is the logic of it and that you can use more than one method to get the same answer. 
Why do the students have so many maths lessons? Do we really need numeracy skills? Well, any employer who's looking to uh, put someone in position in a job is mm. going to be really keen that those applicants have got good numeracy skills. It's really valued by employers. Yeah. And it's so beneficial in all aspects of life. Mm. So it is important. Yeah. So, sir, there's a three digit number. The second digit is four times as big as the third digit, while the first digit is three less than the second digit. What is the number? Now, if the third's a one, that would make the second a four. If the third's a two, that would make the second an eight. And if the third was a three, that would make the second a twelve. But of course, you can't have twelve as a digit, so yeah. it's one of these. Now, we're told the first digit is three less than the second. So that would make this one a one. But it would also possibly make that one a five. So I think there's two answers to this question. 141 or 582. So there's two possible outcomes to this answer, sir. Yeah. All right, thank you for your time, sir. Back to you. I'm Maya Mystery, an ambassador here talking to Miss Wilkes, the Head of Department of Design and Technology. So how are you today, Miss? I'm fine, thank you. I'm looking forward to telling you all about Design and Technology at Great Academy Ashton. So Miss, what is Design and Technology? Design and Technology is a subject where students learn how to design and make products suitable for an ever-changing world. Miss, what do students learn in Design and Technology? Okay, so we have two disciplines in design and technology. We have design and technology as the new GCSE subject where students learn to design and make with a variety of materials like wood, plastic, metal, and they learn about smart materials, electronics, textiles, and how to design and make suitable products, again, for a changing world that's rapidly changing, considering all of the environmental impact that the choices that consumers make on the products that they buy. And then in food, it's now called GCSE in Food Preparation and Nutrition and students learn how to prepare a range of different food products and about the relationship with nutrition and health. I love food prep because I learn about different ingredients and different recipes which I then take home and make it. What is the most popular product that students create in design and technology? Okay, so we have a range of products that students make. They enjoy making all kinds of food products. Pizza is always popular, um, chili con carne, spaghetti bolognese, and in the design and technology area, children enjoy making an African photo frame and a mechanical moving toy in year nine, and then a range of different products and modeling in year 10 and 11. Thank you for your time, Miss. Back to you. Hello Ms Macro for reporting for The Great Show. I'm about to ask you some questions. Many Year 6 students will not have studied drama at primary school, so what should they expect? Exciting, fun, thought-provoking and a great way to get your imagination going. I love performing arts because when I perform, I feel like I can express myself in a way I never thought I would. What can Year 6 students expect from drama at GAA? In Key Stage 3, we want drama students to develop the confidence to build their own characters and make their own drama. Um, we will teach you about vocal skills, physical skills, um, and some of the themes we study are really interesting, like Darkwood Manor, Blood Brothers to Play, um, silent movies, and refugees. Nice. Is drama only for people who want to be famous actors? Absolutely not. Um, in drama, we teach life skills, um, communication, self-building, self-esteem, um, working as a team, um, challenge yourself and, and to think imaginatively. Those are all life skills, not just acting skills. Okay. I love drama because drama builds confidence and confidence builds character. Do you do school plays and how would a student get involved? We love school plays. Um, we go through an audition process, just like you would do in a professional play. Um, auditions are open to all year groups, so anybody can get involved. Uh, typically, we do one play per year, um, and some of my favourites have been Grease, Little Shop of Horrors, and Coming Soon, Annie. Thank you for answering our questions. Back to you. Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth again, and I'm joined with the Assistant Principal and Head of Geography, Mr Holly. How are you, Mr Holly? I'm great, Elizabeth. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. So, Mr Holly, tell us more about, about geography. Okay, so, very popular subject at GCSE Geography. I've been here 15 years and I've got a great department. And what we try and do is bring the subject to life. 
And also, what's the most exciting trip you've been on in geography? Has to be, we took them uh, year 10 and year 11 out to Iceland 2018 and that really brought the subject to life. Volcanoes, glaciers, coasts, superb. I love learning about geography because the teachers bring the subject to life and I love learning about the world. How much homework would you say there is in geography? We try and set homework that's meaningful, so we set it when it's needed. So we, on average, we probably set one every week, but we always make sure it's linked to the learning because that's what we're all about here. I've enjoyed learning about the one-child policy in China and how the country has been impacted compared to the UK. So, sir, I've always loved learning about the Antarctic and I just wanted to know, who keeps the polar bears warm? Is it the penguins? That is a rubbish geography job. I've got a better one. What's the biggest city in the world? I don't know, what is it? Dublin, because it keeps on doubling and doubling and doubling, <laughs> eh? Anyways, thank you, Mr. Holly. Back to you. Hi, it's Rian, interviewing Head of Foreign Languages, Monsieur Malcolm. Bonjour, Monsieur Malcolm. Bonjour. So I have a few questions for you today. Yeah, of course. What languages do the students at Great Academy Ashton have to study? So Great Academy Ashton students are lucky to have a varied curriculum. Um, they get to choose either French or Spanish, mm -hmm. study both. Um, and we offer both at GCSE as well. Uh, the curriculum is strong, they get a variety of different topics and cultural opportunities. And we find that our GCSE cohorts are always very successful. When I'm doing French, I'm fascinated by it. I love helping other people and using it in my everyday life. Why is studying a new language important? I think it's important for a number of reasons. So uh, primarily, it's really important that we have cultural awareness in this world that we're living in. It's also important for uh, future career prospects that students have some language capabilities that they're able to communicate in a different language. Um, and it puts them in good stead as well. I think learning a language is a really important human experience and it makes us better people for doing it. I like Spanish because when we do group work, it's very interesting to hear people's opinions about Spanish culture as well as their personal life. Is there any trips abroad? Uh, yeah, we do do trips abroad and um, we are looking at planning some more. Um, so in MFL, uh, we're planning on doing a trip to France mm -hmm. and Spain uh, that students will be able to do in both Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4. And of course, beyond MFL department, there are many other trips uh, that will be planned as well. Thank you, that's all from me. Thank you for your time. Back to you. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, head girl, and I'm here with the head of humanities, Mrs Leach. How are you doing, Mrs Leach? Fantastic, thank you, Elizabeth. Why do you think it's important for students to study RE? Well, now more than ever in our society, students are surrounded by issues of religion and culture in the news, and it's really important that we teach our young people to understand these issues. And for young people growing up in a diverse society, it's important that we teach them to understand that there are people with different beliefs and values to themselves, and how to understand those values and compare them to their own beliefs. And RE is a safe space in which we teach young people to think about things for themselves, to develop their own sense of morals and to develop their reaction to issues such as life and death, marriage and family, LGBT issues and all of the issues faced by young people in our society today. The one thing I like about RE allows us to delve into the different diversities and religions and ethnicities within the UK reflecting our British values of diversity today. Thank you Mrs Leach. Now back to you. Hi, it's Rian Bashir. Deputy Head Boy at Great Academy Ashton, interviewing Mr Holroyd, Head of Science. So Mr Holroyd, talk us through Science at Great Academy Ashton. Science at Great Academy Ashton is a subject that we want students to really enjoy. We want them to understand why science is so important for them to learn. We want them to go on to university mm -hmm. and some of them study the sciences and go on to be doctors, etc. But we also want every student to understand that science is all around us in our everyday lives yeah. and we want them to have a real understanding of the importance of it and the possible careers that they could go on to. What I love about science is that there's so many different possibilities and a lot of things that haven't been discovered yet, like elements or states of matter. That's what we're learning about now in science and I'd love to learn a lot more about it. Is there a favourite experiment that the students seem to love? My main subject that I teach at the moment is chemistry right. and every student loves the metals reacting with water experiments. Yeah. Um, I love doing it myself because you can come in if you get some nice health and safety all around us but you can get some fantastic explosions taking place and it is thoroughly enjoyable. The one thing I really enjoy about science is doing all the fun experiments because you can find out so much more things that you didn't already know. Do students get lots of homework here? Students get homework in science uh, once a week 
We hope that the homework we actually set um, encourages us to learn the work that they're actually doing in school and just backs up what they're actually doing. Thank you for your time, sir. Back to you. Hi everyone, it's Maya Mistry here, an ambassador, talking to Mr Simpson, the head of department of PE. So sir, do we have any sporting successes in GAA? We do have some sporting successes. Um, we've had students that have gone on to be very successful. We've had one young man who's played football in the English Football Leagues. Um, we've had a young lady who's gone on to do a scholarship in America and um, playing football and she's still studying there now. We've had two young men who have been powerlifters and weightlifters and represented Great Britain. And we've also had um, one young man who's gone to represent Great Britain in judo. My favourite thing about PE is that it's better than being in the classroom. You get, you get to go out and do practical things which can teach you more about um, different subjects than you think. Sir, can you tell us what life is like for a student participating in PE? Um, we try to ensure that we offer a wide and varied curriculum so young people when they come to GAA will experience lots and lots of different activities so from team sports like netball, football, rugby, basketball and cricket they'll also experience individual activities such as badminton, table tennis and trampolining. I like PE because I like rounders and in rounders you get to see who has leadership skills which will help you in the future. So, why is doing PE so important? Um, I firmly believe that a healthy body leads to a healthy mind. Um, if you are healthy, fit and healthy physically, you're going to lead a happier life. Um, I think it's crucial that in this day and age we look after our mental health as well as our physical health and I do believe that the two go hand in hand. Impressive. Back to you. Really hope you've enjoyed watching our video. It's a real celebration of the talent of our young people and the talent of our staff. Thank you for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well, and I very much look forward to welcoming you here into the Academy in September. Thank you, everyone.